Upon completing this module, you will be able to articulate the purpose, components, and position of the physical layer, explain how topologies affect the flow of information and the building of switch networks, and explain the differences between various copper and fiber media. Networking computers, controllers, I.O., printers, drives, and other devices together plays an increasingly important role for our customers. These systems can be relatively simple, involving just controllers and I.O., or more complex, enabling communications between different networks on different continents. To bridge these distances and applications, a number of puzzle pieces need to be in place. It helps to visualize these components arranged in a neat stack. When all of the pieces are in place, communication appears seamless. Certainly, there are more than five pieces to this puzzle but they have been neatly categorized by a couple of organizations to make understanding and design easier and to ensure interoperability between devices manufactured by different organizations. In these fundamentals learning modules, we are specifically interested in moving data around the network. It's the four lower layers that are really important. The top layer or layers have to do with application software running on your computer, controller, drive, or printer. If you can explain these four lower layers to your customer and how Rockwell products fit into those tasks, then you will understand the technical fundamentals needed to successfully sell infrastructure products. The protocol stack model can be applied to any network, including DeviceNet. This learning module, however, is designed to specifically address Ethernet. Larger concepts and divisions will be common across networks, but details presented herein may be different in non-Ethernet networks. You can click a layer of the stack to hear a quick note on its purpose. Click Next to carry on with this module's examination of the physical layer. The physical layer provides the electrical, mechanical, and procedural grounds for physically sending raw bits over a hardware transmission medium. It is built of cables and connectors. The device layer provides MAC, aka Ethernet, addressing. Its function is carried out in layer 2 switches. The network layer connects local networks, provides logical addressing, routing, and encapsulation. Its functions are executed by routers and layer 3 switches. The primary layer 3 protocol is IP, or Internet Protocol. The transport layer handles host-to-host -host transport and uses TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol, and UDP, which stands for User Datagram Protocol. At the application layer, we will find protocols like FTP, File Transfer Protocol, HTTP, Hypertext Transmission Protocol, VOIP, Voice over IP, and SIP, Common Industrial Protocol. The physical layer is the lowest layer of the model and describes how devices are to be physically connected on a network. The detailed rules of the physical layer include wire diameter and insulation thickness, connector pinouts, voltage levels, cable lengths, fiber optic specifications, and topologies. Beginning in the 1970s through the early 1990s, Ethernet networks were largely built using coaxial cable. But today, our customers install modern Ethernet networks using Ethernet switches, fiber optics, and twisted pair cables like CAT5e and CAT6. These Ethernet networks are known as switched networks. The first general rule of such networking is this. We start with a physical channel that consists of passive devices like connectors, cables, and patch panels. If one end of a network channel is plugged into an end device like a computer, printer, or automation device, then the other end must be plugged into a switch. Along the way, there may be passive devices like connectors, wall jacks, patch panels, and patch cables, but the next piece of active electronics in the link must be an Ethernet switch. Because of this simple rule, the fundamental building block of Ethernet networks is a star configuration, 
with multiple end devices connected to a switch in the center of the star. As networks grow, the switches themselves need to be connected to each other to enable communications throughout the facility. Herein lies the big difference between Ethernet and other networks. DeviceNet and ControlNet do not use active devices like switches. Therefore, those networks are limited to a specific maximum number of devices. With Ethernet and its active switches, small networks can be connected together to form larger networks and can eventually be connected to the Internet, creating a very large network indeed. And so it is that the use of switches sets Ethernet apart. The rest of our discussion of topologies will be related to how those switches are connected together. There are three switch topologies highlighted in the reference architecture, linear, ring, and star. Let's see how they can control a long conveyor system. Drill machines, tapping, welding, assembly, and painting operations will be located along its entire length. Each operation might have an Ethernet switch to connect local controllers, I.O., drives, or other devices. Click to find out more about how each topology works. The simplest way to build a ring is to take a linear topology and connect the N2 switches together. Not all switches support a ring topology, but when used, if a single connection is lost between two switches, each switch maintains connectivity to the other switches. Ring topologies provide a minimal level of resiliency. If the ring is broken in one place, the communications path remains open in the other direction. A ring can survive on failure and still provide communications to all devices in the ring. Rings do require more cable to close the loop. They are more difficult to implement because all switches in the ring must be managed switches and use the same resiliency protocol like spanning tree protocol or resilient Ethernet protocol. Connecting unmanaged switches in a ring like this will cause the network to fail immediately. Even though some resiliency is gained with this ring topology, the same communications bottleneck exists as with the linear topology. Which network topology does not present a natural bottleneck? These topologies can be built with copper, fiber optic, or wireless technologies. We'll stick to the particulars of copper and fiber, and we'll start with copper. Remember that with switched networks, if one end of a cable is connected to an end device, then the other end must be connected to an Ethernet switch. The cables used in an Ethernet system must meet the TIA-EIA 568 standards. The standards include details on cable manufacturing, such as wire diameter and impedance, as well as installation and termination methods. This spec also defines the maximum length of a segment between active devices as 100 meters. There are several types of copper cable in use today. The most common cable throughout most of the world, with the exception of some countries in Western Europe, is unshielded twisted pair, or UTP. This cable is made of four color-coded twisted pairs in a PVC or plastic jacket. The TIA-EIA 568 standard specifies the number of twists per meter for each of the unique pairs and insulation thickness. Solid wire is usually used in long installed runs and stranded wire in short patch cords. UTP cable is very effective at reducing internal noise between the pairs. The two main categories of UTP cable today are CAT5E and CAT6. CAT6 can be used for 10 slash 100 megabyte gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet up to 37 meters. It is recommended for all new applications. An advanced version called CAT6A cable supports 10 gigabit Ethernet at distances up to 100 meters. CAT5E can be used in both 10 slash 100 megabit and gigabit Ethernet applications for distances up to the 100 meters. CAT5E is often used on most critical installations where future proofing is not an issue or to extend existing CAT5E systems. Shielded Twisted Pair, or STP, is similar in construction to UTP but adds foil or braid shielding. Rockwell recommends that shielded twisted pair be used in high noise environments and always to connect motion and drives. 
the construction of a shielded cable is more complex and therefore not as flexible. Both UTP and STP are subject to the same distance specifications with a maximum channel length of 100 meters. There are a number of factors in determining whether shielded or unshielded cabling should be used. Some geographical areas mandate that STP cable be used, and some companies have policies regarding the use of STP or UTP cabling. Whenever we are given a choice in the matter, here are some of the technical reasons for deploying shielded or unshielded media. Shields help to reduce noise coupled to the balanced cables by acting as a barrier around the conductors. In the presence of strong electrical currents, shielding can be very important. However, shields can introduce their own problems as they may end up carrying ground currents due to ground offsets within the building's grounding system. At worst, these currents can cause equipment damage. At best, they can be disruptive to the network communications. A properly designed system reduces the chance of ground loops by isolating the shield at one end of the channel from ground. Properly designed end devices provide this isolation through the use of an RC network. The switch end of a shielded channel is always grounded if the switch is grounded. If properly grounded, shielded cables are useful in reducing communications error rates in the presence of high noise. Both UTP and STP cables are terminated with similar connectors. These connectors are divided into two groups, commonly called RJ45 and M12. RJ45 are the most common connectors and are always found on office-grade equipment. Usually these connectors are crimped on the cable using a special tool. And Rockwell also sells insulation displacement connectors that can be attached without using crimpers. RJ45 connectors are available for UTP, STP, CAT5E, and CAT6 cable, stranded and solid wire. In some technical literature, you may find that RJ45 connectors are also known as 8P8C, standing for 8 position, 8 contact. Either the T568A or T568B pinouts are acceptable, with both ends of the cable wired the same. The B standard is the most prevalent. A crossover cable used to connect two devices without a switch is terminated as A on one end and B on the other. M12 connectors are a much more rugged style connector that are appropriate for use on the plant floor. These four pin IP67 connectors are used with two pair or four conductor cables. They are commonly used with on-machine distributed I.O. products where the RJ45 connector is not appropriate. Throughout all the variations in copper cable, run lengths remain limited to 100 meters. So what happens when the distance between two devices is greater than 100 meters? When using copper cable, a switch will need to be inserted into the system before the cable length reaches 100 meters. Then the next cable can run up to 100 meters before another active device must be inserted. In this way, a copper cable system can be extended. But a better solution exists in fiber optics. Rockwell Automation recommends that fiber always be used for switch-to-switch -switch communications instead of copper cable. One of the reasons is that the network convergence time, or the time it takes a resilient network to recover from a disruption when using resilient protocols like STP or REP, is much faster with fiber. Fiber also is immune to electromagnetic interference, making it perfect for noisy environments in addition to long runs. Fiber optic cable is available in two types, single mode and multi-mode. Both types of cables are generally 125 microns in diameter, but the fiber core itself that guides the light waves varies in size. Single mode fiber cable carries a single light wave and is a very efficient low loss cable. It is manufactured with a 9 micron fiber core that is capable of runs up to 10 kilometers. Multi-mode cable is less expensive and carries multiple light waves through its much larger 50 or 62.5 micron core. Multi-mode cable can be used for runs up to 2 kilometers in length. Fiber cables must be terminated with one of several different types of connectors. When connecting to a Stratic switch, LC type connectors are used. When using Stratix 2000 switches or the 1783 MX08F fiber expansion module for the Stratix 8000 and 8300, the LC connectors are inserted directly into the fast Ethernet fiber transceivers that are built into the unit. But when using the gigabit ports on the Stratix 8000 or 8300, 
then an SFP or small form factor pluggable transceiver must be used. The SFP is inserted in one of the slots on the front of the 5700, 8000 and 8300 or on the bottom of the 6000. Then the LC connector is inserted into the SFP. Several different types of SFPs are available depending on the switch in use, the customer's application and their choice of single mode or multi mode fiber. A single physical channel of either fiber or copper can be made up of multiple cables, connectors and other devices. This is similar to the way field devices are connected to the I.O. of an automation controller. A limit switch mounted on a machine is connected using a length of cable to a junction box with terminal strips where other field devices are also connected. Then wire is run between that junction box and the main panel where the controller and I.O. are mounted. The wires from the field device J-box are landed on terminal strips. The in-cabinet interposing terminal strip is then connected to the I.O. modules. If the cabinet is built and tested by an OEM or integrator, the field connections can be made to the incoming field devices and the I.O. module wiring does not have to be disturbed. A similar concept is used when constructing a physical Ethernet channel. In the previous example, terminal strips are used to connect to the discrete field devices. In Ethernet installations, Patch panels, which are passive devices, are used to provide the same type of functionality. Patch panels are designed for copper or fiber connections with two sets of connections for each circuit, just like on a terminal strip. There are a variety of termination methods, depending on the patch panel manufacturer and the application requirements. Some require that cables be terminated with connectors and simply plugged into the correct mating connector and others secure the individual wires of the connector directly to the patch panel itself. In this example, a copper patch cable is used to connect the distributed I.O. to a switch in the same enclosure. The switch is connected to a patch panel by a fiber patch cable. Then a long run of fiber can be made to the main panel. When the fiber enters the panel, it will be terminated at a patch panel again. Another patch cable will connect the patch panel to the switch. It's a good idea to make sure that all fiber and copper cables entering a panel are terminated at a patch panel. In that way, panels can be completely tested independent of the long external interconnections. The switch and end devices will not need to be touched during commissioning. Patch panels are available in different sizes and mounting options including DIN rail. Regardless of the topology, media, or connectors chosen for a project, correct installation procedures must be followed. Shoddy workmanship will have a negative effect on the performance of the network. The Panduit Industrial Ethernet Physical Infrastructure Reference Architecture Design Guide covers grounding and bonding and proper termination techniques of control systems in detail. Make sure your customers are aware of this complete 450 page how-to manual with contributions from Fluke and Rockwell Automation on designing and installing the physical infrastructure for an Ethernet IP network. Here are a few pictures of incorrect physical layer installation. Click and drag the switch and patch panel into their proper positions and connect the Kinetic 6500 motion drives using the appropriate cable. When a system includes motion products, always use shielded twisted pair. When a system includes motion products, always use shielded twisted pair.